All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Butt Down Fellowship. Uh, thank God to all of you that are here. Thank God for those who are watching by way of internet. <laughs> thank God for all of you. <clears throat> uh, again, we uh, just want to say thank you to all of those who are sending in uh, donations for the building firm. We uh, really appreciate it. I met with the guy on Thursday, uh, so I have some stuff that I'm looking at now. And uh, hopefully we can get something for the size and the price that we want. And then we, uh, uh, by August, I think the lease is up in August or September. So hopefully by then we'll have a building that we can move into because we want to get something uh, so that we can have our own building, but also something big enough to where our G3 program can also be housed there with us. And that way uh, nobody can kick us out and change plans on us and all that type of stuff. So. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing that, and again, I just want to thank all of you who have uh, given money for that. We did our little thing for the month of February. Uh, I won't ask again, uh, but if you can feel free, if you want to continue to give that, then you can. Uh, uh, we didn't have all 1,100 and something people that subscribed to give. Uh, maybe not all of them even saw it. Uh, but, but again, those who did, I really, really thank you and appreciate you for that. Uh, also, uh, the cruise for September 4th through the 7th, okay, I just spoke with the guy Thursday, I think it was, uh, I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, one of those days, and the cabins are starting to fill up now because it's getting closer to that date, <laughs> so for those who want to go, again, uh, I, I think all, all it takes is $100 to reserve a, a, a spot on there, and once you reserve it, you have until June, if you decide not to go, you can say, hey, I don't want to go. And the hundred dollars is fully refundable. Okay, uh, so and so uh, I'm supposed to call him back. He's supposed to call me back, but he didn't. But there are uh, some prices that have been updated, uh, and I think it's not the prices, but the rooms. So the rooms that were just a regular room, they I think they're sold out of those now. So the only thing they have is the rooms with the ocean view with the balcony, which is a little more. So I think for two people, I think it's like eight hundred something dollars, uh, which is uh, still a, a really good price uh, for those people who do cruise. Uh, that's a really good price. Yeah, Some days. of the cruises that I paid for, that's that's really good. <laughs> so uh, that's a good price. Three yeah, three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So three days, and that's a good. Uh, so so again, uh, we got uh, some people signed. I think we have about ten people signed up right now. Uh, I think it is 10, maybe 12 people, and uh, I haven't even signed my, my family up yet. So. <laughs> uh, uh, that's what I was going to do when he called me back. And so, because uh, Brother Leonard just reminded me that if he wanted me to reach out to him to kind of check on it and see. And so I, I went ahead and did it myself. I had a little time. And so I spoke with him, and he said he had to call me back because I was trying to see if I could get a room for my kids that's like literally right next door to burn. Okay. So he was like, he had to call somebody and see, but he never called me back. And so, yep, yeah, so I'm going to call him today or either tomorrow, and I'll get my, my stuff booked. Uh, and then uh, uh, that that should be it. So so we're looking to have a good time. Uh -huh. Did you ever find out about the new IDs and passports that they require? No, but I'm going to, because somebody, I talked with somebody last night that were asking me if they're Same trying to go, yeah. and they asked me about that. Now, the last time that I went on a cruise, which is here just recently, you, you, your birth certificate would suffice, okay? How many people don't have books? Right, right. So, <laughs> if you're younger, a little less seasoned, okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right, then you, sh you should be able to come up with your with your birth certificate, okay? But you can also can you use passports. Well, yeah, if you have a passport, that would be the easiest way to travel. Yeah, a passport is the easiest way to travel. You just show them the book yeah, and they just done. go right through. Uh, but I, 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 when I call, I'm going to check on that to see uh, uh, if, the, uh, if the birth certificate will suffice. So I, I'll check on that. Okay. Make sure you where check on the IDs go? too. This is going to Bahamas. Yeah, so it's leaving from Cape uh, Canaveral mm -hmm. and then it's going to the Bahamas. Yeah. Make yeah. sure we find out something. I don't know if you check with immigration or customs about those new IDs that are required. I think oh, yeah, you, yeah, you said something like those. that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. Uh, yeah. I'll ask him. And he, he might not even know. Yeah, uh, I, I may have to actually just call him. changed them. over, but. You know, some yeah. people got license at seven years old. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I have to check. So I, when I talk to him today or tomorrow, I'll, I'll ask him all of those questions. 
and then I'll give you guys an update. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so again, uh, so we have that going on. Uh, we have our we got the raffle date. Yeah, the raffle. I, I'm gonna actually end the raffle, so you better get a ticket if you want to get in. Uh, I'm probably gonna end it the next week or two. All right. So, yeah, the next week or two, I'll probably end the raffle. All right, so and so again, I'm, uh, the raffle tickets are one uh, ticket for five dollars, three tickets for ten dollars, and the raffle is just you get in the drawing uh, to go to the cruise. Okay, so I'm, I'll be personally paying out of my own pocket for two people to go on a cruise. Okay, and so <clears throat> I'll I'll be paying for that, and uh, so that's what the raffle gets you. All right, so yeah, I'll close it. Uh, what's today's date? First. First. The first, so let's say next week, so which would be the what, the eighth? Eighth. So next Sunday, I'll, I'll close it. Then we'll have a drawing sometime. You know the time change next yeah, Sunday. Yeah, daylight same time. It's the next night. Sunday. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, so you have until, you have until 1 a.m., okay, Saturday, Saturday night. Yeah. All right. <laughs> 1 a.m. Saturday yeah. night. All right. But, uh, but yeah, so I'll do that. Then we'll have a drawing, and then uh, we'll, we'll see who wins. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully somebody that, you know, has to pay for airfare. Hopefully, they can get a chance to actually get a you know book a trip for free and yeah. just pay for the airfare. So uh, that'll be good too. Uh, but nothing else. Let us go ahead and dive right in. Second Corinthians chapter three. Second Corinthians chapter number three. All right, and we're dealing. Paul is dealing with these Corinthians. Okay. As it pertains to the ministry of the Spirit, as opposed to that of the letter, okay? Paul is talking about the sufficiency of God and what God is able to do. And he's talking about this New Testament, how God has made him an able minister to speak and teach those things about the New Covenant and the New Testament. Uh, understand that if we're going to be effective ministers of Christ, we have to also be able ministers of the New Testament, okay? All right, look at 2 Corinthians 3. We left off right at about verse 9, 10, right up in here. All right. It says, For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministry of righteousness exceed in what? Glory. In glory. So we'll, we'll go over this, and I'm going to break this down as it pertains to this glory in which Paul speaks of, okay? Uh, verse 10, For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is what? Glorious. All right, you see, Paul keeps dealing with this issue of glorious, okay, and, and the glory. Verse 12, saying then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remained the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away. In who? Christ. In Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this day, this time, and this hour. Uh, we thank you now for this ministry. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for the uh, uh, use of our limbs and uh, the cognitive ability that we have to study your word, things that we so often take for granted. Uh, we thank you for that now. Father God, we thank you now for a, a place that we can come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Uh, we uh, pray now, Father God, that you just touch those who are uh, here, Father God, under the sound of my voice. We ask now that you build, continue to build them up in the inner man, uh, help their uh, spiritual eyes and that they may be, uh, be open and they may be enlightened unto your word and so that their faith will rest not in what I say or what men say, but your, their faith may rest in the power and the word of God. Uh, we pray now, Father God, that you continue to uh, uh, touch those who are uh, dealing with sickness in the body, uh, dealing with ailments, dealing with bereavement. Uh, we pray now for your strength, your peace, and your comfort. Uh, Father God, for you are the God of all comfort. Uh, Father God, we pray now for Dennis's brother, uh, as he continues to go through this ordeal, we ask that you pray for Dennis uh, uh, and his wife, uh, Susan, and pray, Father God, we ask that you pray for his brother and his wife as they continue to go through this. Co comfort them now, give them peace, uh, which surpasses all understanding. We pray now for 
<clears throat> all of those, Father God, who are lost in denominational systems of religion, uh, we pray now that the scale may fall from their eyes. Father God, we pray now that we may be uh, 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 servants of the Lord, not striving, but being gentle and apt to teach, that they, that they may hear the things that thus said the Lord. Uh, we pray now, Father God, for those who are uh, ignorant of this righteousness, Father God, who are going about to establish their own righteousness. We pray now that you uh, may continue to give them uh, your word, for you are not far from them, Father God, if they would just study to show themselves approved. Uh, we pray now, Father God, and we thank you for this ministry. Uh, Father God, we uh, ask that you just continue to keep us and bless us, and Father God, keep us humble before you, uh, that we may say the things that we ought to say and speak the things that we ought to speak. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so Second Corinthians chapter 3, all right, look at this. Uh, so, so now, when Paul is dealing with this issue of, all right, let's go back up to verse 6. Go back up to verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the what? Of the New Testament, okay? Not of the letter, but of the what? Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit does what? Yes. Giveth life. So Paul is making a comparison between the, that of the letter and that of the Spirit, okay? The letter we know is the law. Now, is there a standard of righteousness in the law? Yes. Yes. yes, there is, okay? Uh, the problem is not with the law in and of itself, but the problem is, is with those who can't what? Keep, Keep the law. law. Uh, go to Romans chapter 7. Go to Romans chapter 7, and let's look at verse number... Let's go to verse 12. Romans 7, verse 12. All right, we have it? All right, wherefore the law is what? Holy. And the commandment what? Holy. And just and what? Good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? No. What's the next words? God forbid. God forbid, okay? It, uh, well, let's keep reading. But sin that it might what? Appear sin. The law is holy. The issue is not that there's a defect in the law. The issue is that there's a defect in the people that are trying to keep God's law. Okay? Understand this. So when people are so gung-ho about trying to keep God's laws because they think that's what God is requiring of us, uh, God already knows the end result of that, okay? He's seen it for these past 1,500 years with, with the nation of Israel, okay? And he's seen it since the beginning of time, even starting with Adam. He's seen the results of our fleshly work, okay? He's seen the results of that. That's why he always had in place a redeemer who is himself that could satisfy the justice, uh, his justice. Because otherwise, us trying to perform to please him will not ever satisfy that, Okay? It will not ever satisfy God's perfect standard of righteousness, okay? Because guess what? If you've offended at one point, then you are now obsolete from being perfect, okay? When Christ came who has fulfilled the law, did he offend at one point of the law? No. He didn't break it. He didn't offend it. All right? He kept it perfectly. He did not come to destroy it, but he came to do what? Fulfill. Because if he destroyed it, that means it, was, it would not have been what? Fulfilled. He came to fulfill it. That way, we can now receive that perfect standard of righteousness by being where? In Christ. You see that? That's the whole point. Look at this. Verse 13, Romans 7. Uh, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is what? Mm. Watch this now. When you're trying to perform the law, it works death in you. Why? Because the law is what? Good. So if you can't keep it, that means it's going to work death where? In you. Mm. All right? Uh, that was good. Now, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding what? Sin. Sin. That was the whole point. People are trying to keep this law to please God, and yet and still they come up short every time. Right? I had a brother tell me that the grace of God just means we get a time and time and time again to try to keep it. So I said, so you mean to tell me God, Jesus came to die for you to continue to be inadequate. 
That's that's what you're telling me, okay? Because you can't keep it. So he came to die to give you just enough grace so you can continue to fail. I said, that makes no sense at all, okay? Right? Because if he came to die, okay, that you may keep the law, then what his what, what was the point of him even coming if you could keep it? Right. You see, that that just makes no sense, okay? The more you do it, the worse it gets. Right. The more you do it, the worse it gets because the law is good and it shows that, that shows you that you're in need of a what? Savior. Yeah. You can't do it by yourself. If you could, then Christ is dead in vain. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Makes no sense for him to come to give you grace to keep it. You might become exceedingly sinful. Exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is what? But I am carnal, so where? Understand. Right? For that which I do, I what? Allow not. Allow for, not. for what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that what? That do I. So understand, Paul is talking about the battle that we all face. Romans 7 is an excerpt from, from Galatians chapter 5. So he's talking about this struggle that we all have. Because the law is spiritual, the problem is we can't keep it. Right? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And even if you were, because you were born in sin, even if you were able to keep it, guess what? That is not God's standard of righteousness for today. All right? Faith is believing God at his word. All right? So understand, when it comes to God's faith or God's way of salvation or promise, it has to be his way. Okay, and if you're doing things outside of God's way, then understand you're not doing the right thing. You're going about to establish your own way of righteousness if you are trying to, in this dispensation of grace, get to heaven by keeping the law. You have established your own way of righteousness. You have a zeal, all right? I'm happy that you're trying to do the things of God, but guess what? He knew you couldn't do it, all right? And, and, and until you realize you can't do it, all right? You'll continue to ever forever be in your sins and your sins coming back before you simply because keeping the law is to show you uh, your inadequacy. Right? I tell people all the time, I'm a perfect imperfection. All right? Because in and of myself and in and of this flesh, I'm imperfect. But in Christ, I'm what? Perfect. All right? And God does not disconnect us from our flesh when he saves us. Okay? So we become perfect imperfections. All right? Look at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go back here. People want to be able to glory in what they think they can do, right? When we talk about accolades and accomplishments, okay, in a natural sense, people always want to be able to say what they can do better than you, right? They always want to be able to say that, all right? Well, I'm faster than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm this, all right? But with God, all of us are inadequate, okay? Without God, all of us are inadequate. So we can't say, I came to church more than you. That's why God favors me more than he does you. God created it that way so you can't be able to say that. Right? Everything, all sufficiency is of who? Is of God himself. Not you and your inability to perform that which is perfect. Okay? <laughs> look at 2 Corinthians 3. Look at verse uh, 8. Uh, look at verse 7. But if the ministration of death written in the engraving in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be what? Done away. Done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather what? Glorious. For if the ministration of condemnation be what? Glorious. Much more doth the ministry of righteousness exceed in what? Glory. Watch this now. The ministry of condemnation, which is the law, if that were, were righteous, which we know it to be, all right, much more than the ministration of righteousness exceeded that in what? Glory. glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. By reason of the glory that what? Exactly. Was there glory in the law? Yes. <clears throat> yes. What, what scripture or where can we find where the law was glorious? Was it holy? Was it righteous? Was yes. it good? Yeah. But was there a glory or a, a glory that's in the law? What do you mean glory? Use the word 
two or three different ways. Same, same, same. What are you saying with glory? Same, same. I'm saying that. Because for even that which was made glorious had no glory. But it was made glory. That was the law they were talking the about. The law was right, That's glory. the law that it's talking about. Yeah, so it was made glory and <coughs> had to be glory. But it had no yeah. glory. What is the fundamental definition of glory? That's what I was exactly asking. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I just, uh -huh. Didn't I just ask him what glory? That's what he was asking. What's that? What's the fundamental definition of glory? We look at glory as being joy of some kind. Okay. That sounds good. So if there's joy, it ain't in the thing. It ain't in the law. Uh -huh. I don't think you can be glorious if you can't keep the law. Nobody could keep it. Okay. Okay. So. Um, all right. So having said that, was there a glory in the law? No. There was no glory because nobody could do it. All right. Okay. Uh, you had the joy in it, and you can't join in something you can't do. Yeah, I always say glory, glory be like honor. Right, a, a, a high standard of honor, a state of honor. Right, so I don't know if that would be considered honor if you can't fulfill it. Okay, okay. Yeah, but why would you say you can, like 90% of Israelis All right, say look at this. But look I at, think what you're saying, uh, too, there is glory in it, but we can't glory <clears throat> personally, I guess. Because the, the scripture you just said, it's glory in it, but nobody it, could keep it. It was made glorious, but there, it had no glory. No glory. All right. It was, it was made glory because Christ fulfilled it. Uh-uh. Well, I think it was glorious because of what it was, what it, what it, what it embodied, what it stood for. But it was not glorious because we couldn't. All right. So, it. all right. So, watch this. All right. Watch this. So, now. It was made glorious. It was God's perfect standard of righteousness. We just read that it was holy, it was good, it was right, all of that. So it was made glorious. But was it made to bring about the glory of God? No. No. Hold it, hold it, freeze. No. Freeze. <laughs> 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 uh, the law was given for what? Right. So you that's the question. That what was the law given for? Right. So that's that's what I'm saying. So does did the law ever? It was made glorious, but was God's glory ever the intent? I think so. no. <laughs> no. No. All right. So it, all right. So the purpose of the law it was added because of what? Sin. Transgression. All right. All right. So it was only made to show you that you are a what? Sinner. Sinner. Because if, if there had been a law that could have given righteousness, Galatians 3.28, then surely righteousness would have been what? By the law. Yeah. Okay? All right. But it wasn't. Okay? So watch this. Now, let's keep reading here. We're going to go back and we're going to see exactly what Paul is talking about as he's talking about this able ministers of this New Testament. Verse 10 of 2 Corinthians 3. For even... That which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that what? Exactly. What does that mean to you? Or does it mean anything to grace. you? The glory grace. that exceeds our grace. Grace. Says exceeds. The grace that we have now Seven. compared to it. That's what okay. All right. Now look at verse 11. For if that which is done away was what? Glorious. Much more that which remaineth is what? Glorious. So what was done away and what remains? The law, the law versus uh, righteousness. Uh, the mystery. Uh, so the law is was done away? Yeah. It was taken fulfilled. care of. It was fulfilled on okay. the cross. All right. All right. Look at this. But it ain't been taken away. So what remaineth? As Grace. far as what? The law still right. remains. Uh-huh. The law still remains. We just don't have to keep it. All right, so look at verse 12. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying, all right, we're going to keep no, reading. All right, look at, <laughs> look at verse 12. Yeah, <laughs> look, at, <laughs> look at verse 11. Look at verse, huh? You skip verse 11? No, that's what it was. Much more that which remaineth is what? Glory. That's what we just read. So that's the key. What remaineth and what was done away. All right? Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of what? <laughs> and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, 
that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is what? But their minds were what? Blinded. For until this day remaineth what? The same, the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away where? In Christ. In Christ. Now this is a lot. So what is he saying here before we actually dive into this? You explain this Wednesday, so you ain't really going to explain this. He did. He explained it because the veil is something that happened when he brought the law down. Okay. He brought it to Israel. Now think about this in the context of what Paul is trying to convey here. Now, number one, what's the first thing we know that Paul is trying to do in this chapter? Uh, Beginning at the very first verse, what is he trying to do? Show his, uh, his apostleship. apostleship. Right. He's trying to get them to see his apostleship. He's always trying to defend his apostleship with these Corinthians. They were saying he wasn't of God. They were saying this. They were saying that because he didn't have the stature. He didn't have the, the excellence of speech. He didn't have all of these things that the other apostles had, okay? He seemed like a weak man. And so they were questioning his ability to be an apostle. So Paul is saying, not only am I an apostle of Jesus Christ, but I have, I have been enabled, okay, or have the ability because of God and the spirit of God yeah. to now teach you about those things which you seem to be lacking. Okay, so not only can I teach you about what's going on over here to get you to better understand what's going on here, right? I'm able to do that, so should we be able to do that because we understand the mystery of Christ, right? We understand the mystery of Christ, all right? So now, when he speaks about this veil, okay, what does verse 14, uh, verse 13 and 14 say in respect to this chapter? As far as the veil, yes. Did they did the Ark of the Covenant? No, no. Well, that was that was something that Moses put on because his face. Because the law was placed into the Ark of the Covenant. Right, I had to take commandments. Uh huh. Yeah, so, veil, so, but the veil has to do with what? Christ, because like, Moses temple. saw God, and when he did, his face shone so much. So we're gonna go back to that. So, so what is this saying in respect to what we know before we go to it? about Moses' ve the veil, his face shining, they couldn't see it, all of that. What do we know from our Bible classes when we grew up? What do we know about that? That's the veil that still was there that separated the people from That's God. That's the resurrection. I mean, the uh, yeah, resurrection, isn't it? And the uh, crucifixion you know, all the way to the resurrection? No. No, not quite. But, but I, really I understand broken. where you, it was broken. Right. I, yeah, that that is yeah. right. Right, right, right. Okay. However, all right, I won't say but however, in regards to what he's saying about this veil, Moses, the administration of condemnation, the administration of righteousness, able ministers of the New Testament, how does all of this tie in? We know all this because we read it. They don't know what we know. So they don't know about the veil and Moses? Who? <laughs> no, they don't know about if you're asking about the people, why they're blinded, because they don't know the mystery, the, the, the grace message. We do already. Right. Which, but we also know their message, because we can go back and read theirs. All right. So our message was hidden from them. Right. So when it talks about this veil, even to this day, being untaken away. Because they're blind still. They don't see it. All right. Watch this. Let's go back to Exodus 33. All right. All right, hopefully this cleared up, because it's, it's exciting it to me, and it, it, it's clear in my mind, okay, so. <laughs> Exodus 33. Exodus 33. Watch this, hopefully we can tie this all in. Exodus 33, all right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let's go all the way back a little bit. Let's get a little context. Let's go to Exodus 31. All right. And look at verse 16. 
Exodus 31, verse 16. Wherefore the children of who? Israel. Shall keep the what? Sabbath. Okay, this is, this is something for the children of Israel, okay? To observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a what? Perpetual covenant. Perpetual covenant. What does perpetual mean? A continual covenant, okay? This is for who? Israel. Okay, so it's not for us to keep. That's what Paul says in Colossians 2, 16. Let no man judge you, therefore, in any meat, drink, Sabbath days, holy days, or any, co any covenants, okay? But all of these things were what? A sign, but the body is of who? Is of Christ. We don't need the sign because we have what? The real thing. But understand this now. It is a sign, verse 17, between me and who? For how long? Okay, now, what was the purpose or the point of the Sabbath? And rest. Yeah. Huh? Rest. Okay. Rest. It was it was rest six days. They were supposed to work. The seventh day they were supposed to rest. But in prophecy, as it pertains to the Sabbath, why did God institute it? Because it was instituted in their Ten Commandments now. Yeah. Why was it instituted? What was the purpose of the Sabbath? For them to just keep it, don't work the sixth day, and on the seventh day they can rest? To bring remembrance of him. It will bring remembrance. Okay, because remember now, who is there? That's why it says in the Gospels, when Jesus says, take apart me, my uh, burden, my yoke is what? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. And, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, but my burdens are what? Like your burden, put your burden, place your burdens upon me because my yoke is easy and my burdens is light, okay? So the reason he's saying that because in Christ they shall receive their what? Rest. So when they were to keep the Sabbath, it was to show them, all right? Because what did God, when God created uh, work the six days and he, uh, after he did the six days, on the seventh day it says he what? Rest. Did he rest because he was just so tired and worn out? What does it say he rested? Then what does it say after that? Mm -hmm. Is it from his labor? He marveled. That's all I can remember. All right. Y'all go study that out. All right. So now. <laughs> all right. So now. It, it'll open your eyes up when you go see. All right. So now. When it comes to this, he's, he did all of this and he created it not because the Sabbath was not created for God. It was created for man, okay? So understand that that's why John, Luke 16, 16 says, the law and the prophets were until John. And until that time, the kingdom of heaven is preaching. Every man, what? Press it there into it. What they had to press into, which the keeping of the Sabbath should have shown them, was the rest of Christ. He is their what? Rest. Yes. Uh -huh. Right? He trumps the Sabbath. Remember, they tried to catch him up, and he says, listen, you going to go do work on the Sabbath? He says, well, I am the what? I am the Sabbath, okay? The whole point of this back here was to show you when I come, I am your rest, right? right? That was the whole purpose. And that's why it was a covenant, a perpetual covenant between God and who? Israel, that when he did come, they should have seen all of this work we had to do, this is our rest, all right? He sanctified that day. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, so again, Anybody keeping it today as the perfect standard of righteousness, right, is not following the righteousness of God. All right, because understand, even if you keep the whole law perfectly, that is not the method by which God saves a man today. So even if you could keep it perfectly, you still won't be saved because that's not what God is doing. Right. You see that? So what does that mean? Like, in, I, I went back to Genesis because I needed to look it up. It's like, <laughs> but it says, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So right. what is the sign? What is, why that word, sanctified? I would be saying he sanctified all the days. Set apart. Set apart. Set apart. Oh, right? Yeah. Set apart. Sanctification means to set apart. So he set apart that day for himself. Right? Because again, when they were to keep it, it was to show them. Now, watch this. On the seventh day, did they have food to yeah. eat? Yes. yes. How? If they couldn't work. They got it the day six. before. The double. sixth day, they work what? Double. double. So that they could have it the seventh day, okay? All of this was, it was examples of them working so hard, resting on the seventh, don't do anything. Right? That was a perfect example of what Christ is. You can work all this life, right? And you but you don't really get rest until when? For them, especially until what? 
they get their covenant given to them when their sins are taken away. We receive that rest now. We're no longer having to work for salvation, okay? We receive that rest now because of this dispensation, which is why the Sabbath, which was a day of sanctification, doesn't apply to us today. Whether we keep that, because it says, regard every day unto who? Unto the Lord. Right? One man esteemeth one day above another, one man esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Romans 14, 5. Okay? So understand, when it comes to days, Paul says in Galatians 4, those are weak. Why observe ye days, months? Those are weak and beggarly things of the law. Right? Those are things that could not satisfy. So essentially, right. you, you live in the Sabbath. Right. And shadow of things to come. No, I wouldn't say that. Because, because they would. I guess you could take the principle of that. Right, right, right. right. From what he was trying to tell him, from right. the sense of sanctification and rest. rest. Right, From a principle of that, yes. I would be cautious in saying that because of the prophecy aspect because to it. Because there's a time they're actually, actually going to do that, absolutely. Because if you say it like that, I understand the principle, but if you say it, then people will say, oh, yeah, we're spiritual Israel. Right. You see, that? that's not the case. Yeah. But that essentially that's says saying. that... Mm -hmm. Under the law, you still have to work. Right, right, and right. That was the key. The difference between us and grace and them is we don't have to work for it. They have to work for right. it. So they get a day to rest as far as the Sabbath is concerned. But since we don't have to work, every day is the Sabbath. Because remember that the law was the schoolmaster to bring them where? Unto who? The law. The law was the, Galatians 3, 2, 1, the, law was the schoolmaster to bring them unto who? Christ. Christ. Okay, so understand the whole purpose of everything back here was a shadow of Christ. The way they had to make certain things, the way they had to keep certain days, the way they had to, all of that was a shadow of Christ. Right? So when he came, if you did all this stuff, right, it was a shadow of that. If you spend time building a car, you get the blueprint, you build a car, once the car is built, it's yours to keep. But you don't even recognize it because you're thinking you just, you're just doing all this work for nothing. Right? You got the blueprint. You're laying it all out. Then when the car is actually built, it's yours. You don't take it. It's the same way with them. All of this stuff pointed to Christ. All of their feast days, all of these things pointed to Christ. Right? But yet, when he came, they didn't even know who he was. They had no clue. Right? Look at this. Exodus 32. Kingdom of God 31. Huh? The kingdom of God The kingdom was at hand. Right, because the king was there. So it was at hand, but yet they couldn't receive it. Look at Exodus 31, verse 17. So it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was what? Refreshed. Refreshed. Does this word refresh make you think about something in terms of prophecy? Yes. What? Uh, what was that? Okay. The time of refreshing. From the presence of the Lord. Remember, Peter said to them, okay, uh, 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 Acts 3 19. Repent, therefore, have your sins blotted out uh, uh, for, for that time, from the times of refreshing, from the presence of the Lord. Okay? So that's exactly what this is a time of refreshing. That's why it says it just like it says it. God didn't rest because he was so tired, but he rested and was what? Refreshed. Why? Because he understands that that's, going, that's the same symbol of them being refreshed from the, from the presence of the Lord at that time. See that? And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with what? Finger of God. Written with the finger of God. All right, watch this now. Look at chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this, Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. We don't know what's going on with Moses. He done went up to this mountain. We done left us down here. We don't know what's going on. So now they're talking to Aaron, okay, and they're trying to get Aaron to do something that he shouldn't be doing, okay? Amen. Look at this. And Aaron said unto them, no, y'all just wait on Moses. Because he has the words of God, okay? That's what Aaron said, right? Nope. All right. All right. <laughs> Look what Aaron said unto them. Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. 
And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the what? Land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Now he's doing all of this to who? To the Lord, in the name of God, to the Lord. All right? And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to what? Play. Rose up to play. All right? So watch this now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a what? Stiff-necked people, hard-headed, okay? <laughs> now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot, what? Against them. Against them. Because remember now, God was, would have been justified because they were under covenant with him. All right? Look at King reading. And that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great what? Nation. Nation. Now, watch this. Verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord and his God and said, Lord, why doth thou wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with their what? So now Moses is interceding on behalf of the people who had already broken God's covenant. Yes. All right? Because the, 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 uh, uh, the first commandment of the Ten Commandments says what? Thou shalt have no other God before me. No other gods before me. And what are they doing? Moses went up and they, here they go already. Made a calf. This is your God, O Israel. Okay? Look at this. So, so now Moses is pleading on behalf of the people here. All right? You know how people talk, 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 talk about these people that have uh, intercessory prayer? Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching some video. Somebody sent me in. The, lady, the preacher was preaching and the lady was walking around the front of the church. You know, and somebody in the comments was like, yeah, she, that, you know, look up intercessory prayer. That's what she's doing. And so I had the comment. I couldn't let that one go. All right. So, <laughs> all right, so understand, all right, when, when, when people intercess and pray on behalf of people, all right, when it came to God, it was people that God singled out to be the spokesperson for him at that time, which Moses was one of those people. Today in this dispensation, there is no special person that God is speaking to all right, other than Paul, okay? Because remember, who does our intercessory? Right. Right. The Spirit, remember, in the Spirit make an intercession, Romans 8, 26, with groanings that cannot be what? Uttered. So it's the Spirit doing the intercession. So you facing and walking back and forth, that, you ain't doing nothing but just getting exercise, okay? So understand when it comes to the things that the Spirit is doing, you can't do it. That's why the Spirit is doing it, all right? And so the Spirit is doing intercession. But back then, because God, the inner, the uh, uh, spokesperson for God was Moses. So Moses could talk to God on behalf of the people because that is who God chose to lead his people, right? So Moses is now saying now, hold on, God. You got a covenant with these people now, right? So he's inter he's interceding on behalf of these people that have done wrong, and he's and he's saying that. Watch this. Look at verse twelve. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against what? Now who is he talking to? He's talking to God like this. All right. He's telling him to, telling him to repent of this evil that he thought about to do to his covenant people. Now, watch what God says, man, who you think you're talking to? I'm God. Right? That's what God's going to say. Watch this. All right? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self. If God swear by himself because there's nobody greater to swear by, then that means something, okay? And so, now, what is Moses doing to God? What is he doing here? As far as what he's trying to make sure he's he interceding, but what is he what is he appealing to? His promise. Huh? His mercy. What you say? I said mercy. His mercy. Because remember now, there's no wiggle room in this law. Right? 
But, and, and watch this. What's the famous passage that we're going to read in Exodus 33? What is God going to tell Moses? Uh, in regards to his mercy. Yeah, mercy to whom he had mercy on it. Compassion to him. There you go, right? So, so watch this now. <laughs> so watch this now. Understand now, there's no wiggle room in the law, right? But because God is God, he could do what he wants. So watch this. So, so Moses, Exodus 32, verse, uh, verse 13, Moses is telling him about the, the covenant that you made and you swear by thine own self and says unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I have spoken of, of, of will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord Repented. of the evil which he thought to do unto his what? Evil. Now this is a great example now and I won't talk too much about this because we got a video coming out about this okay on Friday. <laughs> All right, but, but understand repentance if it meant to turn away from sin that means who just repented here? God. God. That means God had to turn away from sin. Mm -hmm. Either your definition is flawed okay or God is flawed. Mm -hmm. And I'll take I the fact know. that your definition is flawed okay. Yeah. Alright. Also not to get off the topic, but what, what does that say about evil, though? What's that? The fact that it says the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do on his people. I think oftentimes when we think about evil, uh -huh. we immediately think the works of the devil. Right, exactly. Right. And, and really, evil is just the absence of good, which we call evil, okay? So remember now, God was going to do something, but again, let me let me ask this because that's a good point. Would God have been justified in doing what He did? Yes. yes. The evil that He thought to do to them, which was what destroy them. Right. Did they not agree to that in their covenant? Right. They yeah. agreed to that. Okay. Yeah. Right. They agreed to that. Right. And so again, it wasn't like He was repenting of evil in a sense that He was wrong in doing something. Right. He was repenting of the evil because he was justified, but because of his servant Moses and because, and really because of the covenant promise he made to them, he changed his mind about doing it, right? right? Because he, he was well within his right because he's the, he's the just, he's just, and he's the justifier, okay? So he's well within his right to destroy them because of what they were doing. Their first commandment was what? Put no other gods before me. That's exactly what they did. He was perfectly within his right to, to destroy them. And he wouldn't have broke his covenant because if you look at what he said in verse 10, uh -huh, uh -huh. he tells you, and I will make it be a great nation. Right. It would have still kept his promise to Abraham. He still would have kept it because it would have, it would have went on through Moses. Moses. Absolutely. So he would have, he had perfect right to do it. He would have been able to keep, he would have been able to, <laughs> he would have been able to keep that covenant because of Moses. He just was going to destroy the people. Right? But Moses, now look at the heart of Moses now. He's pleading with God to do something for these people. Right? He's pleading and he's, 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 uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? He's reaching out to the mercy of God. Right? The mer God just, it, you're merciful. Now, <laughs> watch this now. Moses is doing all this pleading now. And watch what he going to do. All right? <laughs> so, 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 look at this. Look at this. So, the Lord repented. All right? Now, look at verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of testimony were in his what? Hey. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other, they were written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the what? Yes. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of what? War in the camp. So they really was partying. All right? They, they were going to work down there. All right? Say, so, hey, listen, it's like a war. Okay? Look at this. Verse 18, and he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass as soon as he came down to the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses, what? Wax what? High. And he cast the tables out of his hand and did what? Break them. Now, now, this is a lot in here now. I wanted to read this so you get the context. Remember what Paul is talking about. Yeah. That's why we came here. Paul is talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, this veil of Moses. His face shining, the glory 
but one that was done away, one that remaineth, and then one that proceeded or exceedeth in glory. All of this has to do with this. Now watch this. I'm going to tie it all in. Just stay with me. All right. What did Moses do? Huh? He was hot. He was angry. He was mad. He broke the tables of stone. Who created that? God. So watch this because it's a lot here. Just like that, the thing that God created, Moses got so angry that he broke it without, it, without even, he just made intercessory for these people, but right, he just that quick, he that angry. God is, t did God tell him not what they were doing down there? Yes, he told him. He told him what they were, they were building a camp, and he told him what they were doing. He still went down there, right, broke the tables of stone, all right, and had no thought about it because he was what? Amen. Emotional, yeah. right? <laughs> emotional, okay? The same way you make irrational decisions, okay, when you're emotional, it's the same way he just did it. Mm -hmm. And this is a person who had just pleaded and interceded on behalf of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, he is mad at the people. You just you just <laughs> told God not to do this to these people. Just after he got God to repent. <laughs> right? <laughs> he just got God to repent, okay? Now he going down there mad at the people. Was it because he saw what was going on? He saw it, right? Because remember, God was telling him, right. all right, but he saw it, right? He didn't he see it. it. Absolutely. So he saw it. And he said, no wonder you were mad. <laughs> 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 right. Exactly. That, 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 that's, that's back to the Mo, Moses and emotions. That same emotions kept him out of the uh, promise. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because he, instead of doing what he told him with the rock, right, right, right. he, he let his emotions get to him and he smacked. Mm -hmm. He wasn't supposed to do Right, that. right. Now, now, watch this now. Look at this. So, number one, this shows us, right, his inadequacy. They, He broke the law before they could even break the law, okay? <laughs> he broke the law, all right? So, watch this now. The things that had God had written to give to the people, he broke it before they could even see it. What does this represent now? Was his face shining? Yes. At this point. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He had been on the right? mountain. So yes. Yes, on. Huh? I'm not yes. sawn, but he saw him twice though. Yes. We also saw him at the Huh? It was the presence. But was his face shining here that they could not look upon him? No. No. It was shining, but they hadn't seen him yet. They don't see it. What we understand, his face was shining after he saw the presence of God at the temple when he was in the smoke, right? His face started shining in because he went the to the temple time, door. Yeah. The first okay, so is this the first time he went up to God to get the law? No. I mean, yes. 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 So was his face shining? In the presence, it always shines. <laughs> but I thought that uh -huh. when the first time that he went up in the mountain, uh -huh. and when he came back, I thought that his wife saw his face, you know, uh, sort of change. Okay, okay. So, so now, watch this. Uh... All right, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. <laughs> I was going to break on y'all, but I ain't going to do that to you just yet. Look at this. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Look at verse 18. Uh, verse 19. So he break them and beneath them out. Now, and he took the calf which they had made and did what? Yeah. Burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel do what? Yeah. And what, what was that all about? That's a good question. <laughs> huh? It's still emotional. Like, listen, and, and it's almost like basically, it's almost like basically, I remember my, my father in law caught my brother in law smoking a cigarette, okay, which he shouldn't have been doing. And so he made him smoke more cigarettes, okay? <laughs> so since you think you want to smoke, then smoke these other ones, okay? All right, so, so, so now, all right, so understand it was almost that type of thing what Moses was doing. Y'all shouldn't have been doing this anyway, so because y'all did it for your punishment, you're going to drink it, all right? So, so it's almost like he was doing that to them, all right? Now, look at this. And Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people unto thee 
that thou has brought so great a sin upon them. So now it's Aaron's fault because remember Aaron was appointed the Levitical priesthood. Right. Yeah. All right. And Aaron said, let not thy anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on what? Oh, Lord, Aaron. Aaron just passing the blame, ain't it? So, so Aaron said, listen, now don't let the Lord, uh, uh, the, uh, the anger of the Lord wax hot. Because you know these people crazy, all right? So, <laughs> so, so listen now, look at this, verse 23. For they said unto me, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. Did he lie on them? No. Nope. That's what they said now. That is what they said, all right? All right, look at verse 24. And I said unto them, whosoever had any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it to me that I cast it into the fire, and there came out this what? Calf. Yeah. Calf. So they gave it to me. I kind of did it. it. This calf came out. Like, I don't, I don't really know what's going on. But this calf came out. All right, look at this. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me, and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. All right? And he said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his what? Brother. Brother. And every man his companion, and every man his neighbor, and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about what? 3,000. 3,000 people died. Right? Because of this sin, all right, and then putting somebody before God, okay? Put another God before God, okay? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, now I'm lost here. I want to make sure I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm not Go ahead. lost in what wilderness here. Uh -huh. Who was in that pillar that was leading them all the time? What do you mean? In the daytime, what did they have? And at night, what did they have? Right. So that trip that hadn't started yet? Was that the presence this, of God? Yeah, that, but they're already out of the land of Egypt. Right. Yeah, but he still was leading, yeah, right? Yeah. Right, in the wilderness, yeah. You mean uh, cloud, cloud by yeah, day, pillar by the so cloud by day. This cloud should have been the presence of God, right? Yeah, it should have been, but that doesn't have, what, what should, I don't understand. What does Why that would do you ask this? me for a God if he already in my presence? Well, the same reason they did it for the 1,500 years, all right? So remember, they asked for judges. And what did they need a judge for? And they, they got God. Yeah. So he gave them judges. Okay? Jeez. Right. He gave them everything that they thought they wanted. He gave it to them. When really, like you just said, <laughs> what did they ask? They shouldn't even ask for all of that. Because they had God himself. Who is the king? Who is the judge? Okay? They had all of these things themselves. Okay? I'm just trying to find out. It's not they kill everybody. Right. No, out. that was more than 3,000. But who's left? Their brothers, the companions, and the neighbors. Right, right. So I'm trying to and it's, you're right. So when they, it was 3,000 men that died, okay? So now, it wasn't all of them that had made it out of, out of Egypt to, oh, to, the, to, the, to the wilderness. Yeah. It wasn't all of them, okay? Because remember now, uh, anybody under 20 would not have been a part of this. Right? That was the age of accountability that the Bible speaks about. Okay? Mm -hmm. So so it wouldn't have been all of these people. Okay? It would have been the men, the name, his brother, and every companion, and every man his neighbor. So anybody under 20, you would have had a lot of them. They wouldn't have been killed at that time. All right? And it was really just really the 3,000 men that were killed right there. All right? Hmm. Uh, now, look at this. Now, look at verse 30. Drop down to verse 30. And Moses uh, uh, and it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord, excuse me, peradventure, or perhaps I shall make an atonement for your what? Sin. Sin. Now, Moses, you don't just you don't act at all out of character. You talk about <laughs> making an atonement for their sin. Okay, watch this. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, All oh, this people have sinned a great sin, have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot what? Out of my book. All right. Therefore now go lead the people into the place in which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron what? Made. Now, look at verse 33. All right. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people, which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto thee. All right, see, that will give it. Uh, let me see. Drop down to 
Look at go to uh Look at verse 12. We'll pick this up in just a second, okay? Another quick question. Yes. You know I'm leaving in a few seconds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Up until that time when the stone was broken, they were still under the promise of Abraham, correct? No, no. Exodus 20, that was the giving of the law. The law had already been given. Yes. Yeah. But Exodus they haven't 20. had the stone yet. They didn't have actually have it written on the stones, no. Okay, but they had right. already been separated and the Levites right, took right. over. And, okay. Right, right, right. Yep. Yeah, because that was Exodus 29. All right, 29 was when the priesthood, Aaron and the priests, they were consecrated so and separated. That's why the priests them. were called, the Levites were called right. the Which is why Aaron was left with the people. Because he should. <laughs> that's he was the he was the chief or the high priest at that time. Right. Yeah. All right. So so we'll take a break real quick and we'll pick this up because we're gonna we're gonna cut right back real quick because I don't want you to lose your train of thought on this. All right. Because we're gonna get to the point. Uh, uh, where Moses' face was shining and his veil and all of that. Because we did we agree that his face wasn't shining this time? Right now. We, we, said, we, we said, oh, we, we didn't say anything. Say anything. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to bring up um, the last time you brought us to that verse, uh, which was uh, 32, 14. Uh, the Lord of you also brought up Genesis 6, 6. Yeah, there's a lot of them where he repented. And Acts 5.31. Yeah, Acts 5.31, it says he will grant, because I was speaking of repentance, so he yeah. will grant them. Yeah, but I'm going to leave all of that because it's going to come out. I mean, video. He already yeah. did a video. That's what he tried to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, so, all right, so nothing else. Listen, we'll come right back. We're going to take a little shorter break than normal because I, I want to, I need some time so I can talk about this and let you out. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, my wife also got the birthdays. For February and March, yeah. So if you had a birthday in February and March, I'm going to eat a cupcake for you, all right? <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, so we have those in the back, so you can help yourself to, to some of those, all right? Uh, make sure you eat them all up, all right, so we don't have to take none home, all right? So, all right, nothing else, let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace, your mercy, your love, your peace, your kindness. Father God, we just thank you for your word that we can come and study it out. Father God, we thank you now for your graciousness, Father God. We thank you for <clears throat> salvation as a present possession. Father God, we just thank you for all that you have given us, all that you have done. Uh, Father God, we don't need to ask for anything, Father God, because you have given us more than enough. Uh, your grace is sufficient in all that we go through, and we thank you for being an all-sufficient Savior. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.